Hello, welcome to Mobile Apps Academy. In this tutorial series, we will develop a e-learning platform app UI using Flutter. This is the final part of the series. First three parts are already available on the channel. Codebase is hosted on GitHub. Link is provided in the description. Let's continue from where we left off. In the last part, we created the course slider. In this part, we will explore page navigation and the course detail page. Let's start by creating a Dart file under the pages and name it as course detail page. Insert this create a status widget and name it as course detail page. To navigate to this page from home, we need to specify the routes inside the main material app. We need an identifier of the page which we want to load. Create a static variable and assign the identifier like this. Now use this route name inside the material app which we'll call the course detail page. Open up the course slider widget. Here we need to add the on tap gesture so that whenever we tap on the course style, it should go to the selected course page. Create a void function which will take the context. We will use this context with the navigator to push the page with the arguments. Here the argument value is id. Now call this function on tap. Perfect. Let's run the app. As we expected, it is shifting from the home page to course detail page. As we are passing the ID as arguments, when we shift the page, we can retrieve this argument value inside the course detail page from the model route. Once we successfully retrieved the ID, using this ID, we can get the selected course from the course data like this. Now remove the placeholder and add a scaffold. Set Extend body to true and background color to gray with 100 shade. We need an app bar for this. Set background color to gray with 100 shade. Align the title to center by setting it to true. In app bar, we have two sessions. One is leading and another one is actions. Leading is for left area and action is for right area. Most of the time, left area will have a back button. So let's create one. Add a padding widget with a padding value of 5. Under this, add an icon button as child. I am using the arrow left icon with a size 26 and color is black. Make it circular by using icon button dot style from. Also, set the background color to white. On press of this button, pop the page to go back to the home page. Perfect, it's working fine. To add a central title, we set the text field to the title parameter of the app bar. I am setting the color of this text to black, font weight to bold and size to 28. Perfect. Make this as constant to remove the warning. Now, let's add the right buttons, that is action buttons. Add a padding widget with a padding of 5. Make icon button as a child of this padding widget. For this tutorial, we are not doing anything on the click of this button. For icon value, we check that if a selected course is bookmarked, we show one icon, otherwise a different icon will be shown. If this is bookmarked, the icon will be coming from the iconly board, whose size is set to 26. And if this is not bookmarked, we will only change this to iconly light, like this. Perfect. Here we have the icon. Let's format the code. Extract the app to a new method. Awesome. Let's develop the body. For body, I'm using a list view. And child of this list view is a padding widget with a padding value of 15 for horizontal. And a column widget as a child of this padding widget to organize everything vertically. Set its cross axis alignment to start. I want to add an image with a play icon at the center. To achieve this, I am using a container whose margin is set to top 10, bottom 8, and right will be 5. Add a box constraint and make it expand. Set height to 230 and width to double dot infinity. Adding of this container widget is left 16, bottom 8, and right is 16. 
add a circular border radius using a box decoration and set its value to 5. Using decoration image and image URL from the selected course data, I am showing an image. Make fit to cover. I would like to add a black shade on the image. Instead of adding a transparent container, I can use color filter and set the color mode like this. And a stack widget as a child of this container. Let's align this to center. Perfect. To create a circular play button, add a circular avatar and set its color to white with the opacity of 0 0.6. Radius to 16. Below this, add a play icon of color white and size 90. Our icon is bigger than the circular avatar. As we set the circular avatar radius to 60, let's increase it to 50. Let's change the icon color to red. Awesome, red looks good. Let's extract a function from this to organize the code. Most of the upcoming widgets are text and they are pretty straightforward. So let me add them quickly to save the time. Perfect. If you want to see the code, you can pause here and check it out. Or you can also check out our GitHub page. I'll be adding two text fields with a sized box to give some spacing in between. After this, I need a header for lesson text. Below this, a sized box is added to add a space. Now, we need the list view to show the course sections. Make this list view shrink wrap to true. Set physics to never scrollable physics. This list view will have a separator. In our case, it is just a sized box of height 10. For item count, we will pass the section lapse length which we get from the course data. Let's use the item builder to build the list items, which takes a context and an index. Inside this, let's get the section lapse from the selected course data. Now return a container. Using a shape decoration, set the box shadow to gray with a shade 100 and blur style will be outer. Set the color of this container to white and shape will be rounded rectangle border with the border radius set to 10. The child of this container is a list type. On top of this, we will not do anything in this tutorial, so add an empty function. For leading, that is for left area, I am using a play button with a size 60 and color set to gray. Perfect, we can see the tiles. Pass the section heading value to the title. Make this title color to black and font size to 15. I want to add the duration of the each section below this. To achieve this, we have subtitle parameter in the list type. This subtitle contains a time icon and a text field with a space in between them. Our play button is looking a little small. Let's increase the size to 50. Below the list view, add a space of 90. We are adding this space so that we can add a floating action button on top of this one. Collapse the body. As this is the last widget of this tutorial series, I would like to give you a challenge. I want you to add the floating action button. I have provided few links in the description regarding this topic. You can go through them and learn it by yourself. You can pause the video and try to achieve this. Awesome. I hope you guys tried. Here is the code for floating action button. Perfect. I hope you enjoyed this series as much as I enjoyed making this. It would be very helpful if you subscribe to the channel. If not, at least drop a feedback comment on how we can improve.